Kyle, I'm posing this one to you. How can the Seahawks maintain this going forward? And how did they manage to take away Saquon Barkley out of this game? Well, I thought they were extremely effective in just stacking the box. And if the Giants were going to win the game, it was not going to be because of Saquon. Just because, let's face it, is Daniel Jones essentially that guy to lead the Giants to the promised land? So far as this season, he's been fine. He hasn't really turned the ball over as much as he, as he has in the past. And you combine that with what they've done with Saquon, the Giants have been relatively successive, uh, successful this year. But not in this game. I thought the Seahawks did a great job in essentially containing Saquon to a rather, I would say, inconsistent day. There were some plays where he was able to bounce out, uh, pick up some first downs for the Giants. But by and large, the Seahawks were able to hold him relatively solid the entire day. And the way that I look at it, the Giants really don't have that good of a receiving core right now, just because a lot of guys are dealing with injuries. And a lot of the receivers that they have in the fold right now are essentially second string and third string receivers. So the Giants offense is already kind of at a disadvantage to begin with. And really this year, they've leaned on their defense to kind of get them these wins combined with the fact that the offense isn't turning the ball over. Well, you go, up a you go up against a team like the Seahawks, who have been one of the biggest surprises that both you and I have seen this year. You got to be on your A game because even though that the Seahawks, they're a decent team to contend with, the Giants had the requisite pieces to be able to beat the Seahawks, but they just weren't able to. And, you know, just to kind of focus on Seattle here, Seattle just continues to find different ways to win these games. Because a lot of times this year, they've had to really rely on their offense to score points just because their defense can be suspect at times. But I'm going to be honest with you. I thought they did a great job against that Giants offense today, holding them to 13 points, really limiting them across the entire span of the game. And even though the game was relatively close going into the fourth quarter, the Seahawks outscored the Giants 14-3 to in that quarter and essentially ran away with the game, winning by two possessions. And I think just when it comes to the success that the Seahawks have had, it's been a very complimentary effort because Geno's having one of the best seasons I've ever seen him have until he really starts kind of turning the ball over, which at this point I don't really see happening just because he's been relatively consistent the entire year and not turning the ball over. I think the Seahawks offense is going to continue to do well here. And not only that, they're getting decent contributions from the ground game with Kenneth Walker and then in the passing game, he's got decent targets to throw to. Tyler Lockett is just a seasoned vet who just knows how to gain separation and is just rock solid in their wide receiving core. And then you have DK Metcalf, who I didn't even think was actually going to play in this game because he's been dealing with a lingering injury issue. But he goes out against the Giants today and ends up scoring a touchdown. And he was just as contributive to that Seahawks offense as Tyler Lockett was. I also thought they got good contributions from Disley. And the fact that Geno Smith didn't turn the ball over, it put them in positions to win that game against the Giants. And to me, you know, it, we have to talk about the Seahawks and whether or not they could be a legitimate contender in the NFC. Because going into this game, Kev, like you said, the Giants were 6-1 and one and have been one of the best stories that we've seen in the NFL so far this year. Now we really got to consider what the Seahawks are because nobody expected them to be in this position where they'd be in first place in the NFC West eight weeks into the season. And with the way that they've been playing, I think there's a very good chance that they can pull off the next couple games that they have on their slate here. They got to go up against the Cardinals next week, and then they play the Buccaneers the week after. Those are two winnable games for them. And I think as long as they just continue to have a balanced effort offensively and their defense is opportunistic, get some turnovers, puts that offense in a short field to work with against the defense that they're going up against. The Seahawks have a winning formula here. So we'll see what happens. I'm still a little bit iffy on them being able to maintain this for the rest of the year. But for the next two weeks, I think there's a very good chance that they can bump up to a six and three and then potentially a seven and three record if they play their cards right. But all in all, it was a great effort from Seattle against the Giants, and I think if they're able to maintain it, we should definitely watch out for them once we start getting into the later stages of November and into December. This team is for real. There's not really much I can add to that aside from the fact that I need to circle on one big statistic here, and that is the fact that they got to Daniel Jones 
five times. The Seattle Seahawks have not been known for their defense over the course of the last couple of years, especially towards the end of Russell's tenure there. Uh, the Legion of Boom was gone. They were broken apart. They were struggling to really lock anybody up. Obviously, they go and acquire Jamal Adams, who hasn't been healthy. And then you go and you shut out one of the better teams in the league in the Giants. Obviously, like I said, they sacked Daniel Jones five times, right? They go and they get 10 quarterback hits. He was pressured the majority of the game. The Giants offensive line fell apart, and they weren't able to run the football. So when you talk about protection, opening up run lanes for one of the best backs, if not the best back in the league this season, Daniel Jones had to rely on his arm the entire time. And of course, he had to rely on his legs, but he wasn't able to get space out there in the open field because he was never able to get past the first layer of pressure at the line of scrimmage. Now, I will give the Giants defense credit because Kenneth Walker only had 51 yards on 18 attempts, so they did what they needed to do on the ground as well in terms of limiting Seattle, but when you put the shoulders, or excuse me, when you put the weight of the Seahawks on Geno Smith's shoulders that he has just shown time and time and time again, he's able to hold it. He's able to produce. He's able to keep the ball away from the other team. And even though he was sacked a couple of times and hit a few times, it wasn't enough to de de derail the success of Seattle's defense as well as the consistency of their offense because they popped off for 14 points in the fourth quarter. They held the Giants to six points in the second half. So kudos to their defense. As good as Geno Smith has been the last couple of weeks, Seattle's defense has stepped up. I think they need a lot more credit. And the fact that they're sitting at the top of the NFC West when I'm pretty sure not a single soul saw that that has to speak volumes about the coaching staff and Tyler Lockett going up on the podium with Geno Smith and DK Metcalf making the comments that he did isn't it crazy how when everybody buys in the team is a completely different team that was a shot at Russell Wilson I think the more and more not to change this into a Russell narrative but I had to because Tyler Lockett made it his business someone a very someone who's a very quiet person someone who does not speak very much I think there is becoming truth to the narrative that Russell Wilson may have not been the greatest teammate in the world while he was in Seattle. Again, we'll let that marinate over time because Tyler did say it just a few hours ago. But at the end of the day, the Seahawks are sitting at five and three. And I'm, dude, Denver's looking at six and what is it, three and five to start the year off? Absolutely atrocious. But hey, kudos to Seattle. And I can't believe the Giants fell the way that they did. I thought this would have been a little, personally, I thought this would have been a little bit more competitive.